This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Around New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just explaining how we really are and what we're doing right. Therapy can help you find your strengths so you can ditch extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick celebrate the progress you've already made visit betterhelp.com slash idk today to get 10 percent off your first month that's betterhelp help.com slash idk do you ever feel like money is just flying out of your account and you have no idea where it's going well i know it's on all those subscriptions so i use rocket money to help find out what subscriptions i'm actually spending money on it was eye-opening and i had to cancel the ones that i didn't want anymore stop wasting money on things you don't use cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash i-d-k-a-t idacat that's rocketmoney.com slash idacat rocketmoney.com slash idacat roofs floors Walls. Yeah. Which one was invented first? You might find out on I Don't Know About That with Jim Jeffries. I feel like I may have repeated myself. Have I you've I said done that, that three or four times. Have I? Yeah. Because oh, I always, out of stuff. I look just, around yeah. the room yeah. and I go, yeah, but it is. Which one was invented first? Well, the they reckon the roof. Roof. The roof. And I it was just roof. It was just pylons. Yeah, off to the side. That floor, voice yeah. that you don't uh, you, you don't normally hear if you if you're listening on the podcast, and you're not watching. It, it, it's the very talented, very funny Matt Walsh is with Thank us, you. and he's our he's our guest today. Thank uh, you. He's he's here for the intro. I I don't know what subject we're talking about, but I assume it's something comedy based. Uh, because uh, you'll know Matt from uh, his many, many... I was just watching you the other day in old school, and I like that uh, um, uh, uh, that your character's name was Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't even realise that. Our, I mean, I've seen the movie. Our, our, mutual, our, yeah. our mutual friend Scott, who wrote this script, yes, would have yes. just gone... Ah, uh, fuck it, Walsh. <laughs> I think I was in some ways amused for that character. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know. Maybe we're talking about comedy. We could be talking about uh, Abraham Lincoln. Who knows? You don't know what Matt knows. That's true. Yeah. We haven't done Abraham Lincoln, so that's a good point. Yeah. Have we? Have we done Abraham Lincoln? I don't remember. I don't think we have. Nah. I'm we, we, that just, Abraham Lincoln we, we just said the JFK assassination. No, we've done, no, we've done the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. No, well, sort of. We did Edwin Booth. Yeah, and, and all, John but all the, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we didn't just talk about his acting career, did we? <laughs> well, like, Lincoln was Lincoln was mentioned. He was featured. Yeah. Uh, let's quickly go through <laughs> through some plugs of, of what we're going on here. Yeah, I don't even know when this is coming out. Do we know? Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll look you know. up your date. Yeah, I got it. Uh, I think you just you're done with these dates this week. So come up you, the thirtieth. Ah, uh, you got like stuff. Las Vegas, uh, Las Vegas, March and eighth and ninth. You're gonna be oh, I'm off to at Las the Vegas. Mirage. Uh, when's when's my? Look, we, we've just announced the LA shows. Um, what time? When are they? I didn't see them. Oh, well, they haven't been. I'll tell you the other dates. March twenty second and twenty third. You're gonna be in Des Moines. March twenty second. March twenty third. You'll be in Kansas City. Everything go is on jimjeffries.com. That's not right, is it? Uh, that's the old one. That's the old one. Yeah, so I'm I don't just know. Your okay. website, it's old. I, so. I, I got to get onto them to fix that. I probably should have the proper dates with the real. <laughs> don't go to his website for LA. <laughs> Everything else is good. Yeah, Everything yeah, else yeah. is accurate. If you, if, we you, think. if you go to the Ace Theater, because I've got ticket counts, they've sold some tickets. Okay, so the, the Ace Theater in LA, we, we're going to be lighting <laughs> it up. And uh, where are you, Forrest? Forrest is going to be in Australia. I am. Yeah, those that just went on sale. Uh, April twenty fourth and twenty sixth, I'll be at the Factory Theater. It's in Sydney, and uh, the tickets are on my website now. Or you can go to the Factory Theater in Sydney. If you're in Australia, listen to this. Obviously, that would be the best people to listen to, to go out. Um, and yeah, two shows at nine thirty, twenty fourth and twenty sixth. I'll be doing some shows in Melbourne as well. I don't have those yet, but just look at my website for that. But please go and get the tickets for Sydney now, twenty fourth and twenty sixth of April, Factory Theater. And you'll be doing a, a little secret wow. show with me in Australia. Yeah, I don't know if you're allowed show. to announce that yet. We're not. Okay, well, you just but um, there's a secret show secret, happening uh, uh, that I'm going to be involved in with Forrest. Uh, something's going down. It's all happening in Australia. It's not. A, it, don't call it a tour because it's not. <laughs> um, it's well, secret. Well, I, uh, I was. Uh, you know, it's a I, secret I, thing that we want to sell a lot of tickets for. <laughs> so get ready to buy them. <laughs> But not I'm, yet. Not, I'm interested. I don't even know what it is yet. It's uh, good hype. Yeah, we'll text. We'll let you know when it's tough. If you want to come down to Australia. Yeah. 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 If you want to come. Have never been. Oh, you never been to Australia? I haven't yet. I will get there, but no, I haven't been there yet. I think Veep was very popular in Australia. 
gives me reason to go down there. Yeah. Shake some hands. Hey, yeah. I was on the show. <laughs> yeah. Can I get a cup of water? You, you, <laughs> you, you and Bacadol could go down there yeah. and have a good time. We have our mutual friend, Dan Bacadol, who was also from Veep. And the Are less- you explaining that to me? No, I'm just uh, the, the listener at home and the, yeah, and, the, and the lesser known TV You're show. You're the audience legit. surrogate today for us. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah, last night TV show. Oh, legit. Yeah, yeah legit. Sure. legit wasn't very big down there. Don't mention that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'll tell you where legit was really big. Israel. Really? True. For some awesome. reason, my sitcom did really well in Israel. It's the only place where in the street people are like, how's Billy doing? Uh, and I'm like, all right. So it gives me Wait, a Legit call. wasn't big in That's Australia? That's fun. No, nah, Legit was on... It, it's okay now. It's one of those things that it's doing well on streamers and stuff like that. But at the time, it was just on cable, like the comedy network type of thing over there. It never made it onto like a regular channel and stuff. But people who like it, like it. And... um uh, but in Israel, it was like uh, one of the top. I think I think it's all placement. I think it was on after the Big Bang Theory, and they just oh. you know it, it's a little bit like searching for Sugar Man, like yeah. in South Africa, where, where, where the Israelis just think legit was big everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I haven't got the heart to tell them different. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, they've got other problems, so I, yeah. I, I, I leave At them. The time, be. Yeah. I leave them be. Uh, um, <laughs> we usually after I introduce the. De- Guess, but we're promoting a lot of stuff now. Should promote what you're doing as well. Uh, you have a Veep podcast, the Second in Command. Oh yeah, Veep here rewatch that you record mm-hmm. right on this table, right? The yeah. Same place. Second yeah. in Command. All things comedy. Why, did we, why do we bother sending him the address? I feel silly now. <laughs> I didn't send him the address. <laughs> oh, I did. Yeah, you sent it to him. Uh, yeah, that's that's, that's yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, you're going to be performing at Dad's Garage in Atlanta on February 29th. It's you, Tim Meadows, and others. Right? Right. Yeah, and others. Yeah, yeah and on the, and also in Boca Raton at the studio at Meisner Park. March 1st and 2nd. You can yeah. get tickets to both these. You can go to dadsgarage.com if you're in Atlanta, February 29th, or the studio at meisnerpark.com, March 1st and 2nd in Boca Raton, Florida. Uh, and on Instagram, Mr. Matt Walsh. Go check him out Thank there. You. Yeah. Right, we, we have a Tim Thank Meadows story. Plugs. We won't tell it right now. We'll tell you afterwards. Please. It's, it's, no, it's a good one. It's a good Please. one. But we also don't want to tell it on the podcast. Well, okay. yeah, but you just, what are you doing? Secret just, shows. This is all vodka. Secret, secret, secret conversation. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Well, think, you told me you tell it. The whole podcast is. We're interesting fellas. Let's just start. We'll start. If you listen to more of this podcast, it's like an onion. It'll make you cry. <laughs> oh, that's how it's like an onion. That makes you cry. I don't think I've ever been told this. It's an onion and it grows out of the dirt. Oh, I have one thing that I can tell our listeners. Um, rugby. We did an episode on rugby. Two two episodes ago, three episodes ago, sure. four episodes, something like that. Um, Five. And it Six. occurred to me, and I was talking to Aaron after the podcast. I said, do you know more about rugby now? He goes, I actually don't even know really how the game's played. Because we never really yeah, said, I this is what rugby had. I wasn't so, really sure what was I hit up on. our rugby expert, Angus Usher, and he said, "It's this is just a, this, a succinct description. Do an it in eight, the South African accent. He was from South Africa. I can't do accents, It would only yeah. be appropriate. An 80, an 80 minute the game. I can't do accent. <laughs> 80 minutes a game of two halves. That's, that's, no, no, that's really yeah, bad. Yeah, I know. It's, it's like bad. See, now it's yeah, bad. Really yeah. bad. It's like a New Zealander with a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> it's an 80 minute game of two halves where teams score points through tries, conversions, drop goals, and penalties. The game is a full contact invasion sport with a large emphasis <laughs> on field territory to allow for point scoring opportunities. Invasion, <laughs> invasion, <Yeah>. invasion <laughs> sport that is popular in New Zealand, Australia, and South Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Sounds that's about right. I also don't know if that helps you understand rugby better, but it's 80 minutes, two halves. That's all you do. It's like American football. <laughs> it was an invasion sport. Break. Is England American win. football an invasion sport? Uh, oh, yeah. So, yeah, because, yeah, same thing. There's the yeah, end zones. Yeah, yeah. You're so, invading the end zone is what makes yeah, it an invasion. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, thought, I thought it's like. No, because you're in the, you're in Packers territory. You're in Dolphins okay. territory. Yeah, so, so, is yeah. the okay. board game risk an invasion? Actually, that's. Yeah. Actually, that's yeah, 100%. Sure. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 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 That's no doubter. Risk and yeah. rugby are very similar. Yeah, but I don't know if it's full contact. I don't know if it's full contact. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. Okay. I, I don't do Baru and Lottie. All right. Let's get to our. <laughs> I have, a, I have characters. Good. That's I, pretty good. I have characters. Barbara and Lottie. Yeah, good impressions. I can't do it. So. Mm, yeah. All right. Let's get to our, our okay. show. Um, you've already introduced Matt Walsh. Uh, now. Now it's time to play. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. Yes, no. 
Judging a book by its cover. Now, normally, Matt, I do things uh, I, <laughs> where I look on the screen at trying the to guess. and I, I look at their surroundings and see what type of a human they are. So I see you have some hooks on the wall. Um, <laughs> this isn't my home. <laughs> I know, Matt. Matt's a, Matt's a, 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 a comic actor. Yep. Um, uh, yeah. and an improv guy. So I'm just going to say it's 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 uh, the, the comedy. Well, yeah. we've done stand up comedy. Yeah, we did famously. Famously did stand up comedy, yeah. which I didn't know much about. Yeah, no, you didn't know much about it, and it was one of right, our because there's history and stuff. Okay. I know how okay. to do it. Yeah, but it's like I don't reckon half the tennis players know when, when how rackets are made. You know what I mean? Okay, they just get on with the. You swing. know Wayne Fetterman. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, you know he wrote a book on stand up, so he was our expert for stand up. Oh, perfect! Yeah, and yeah. at the end, you already know we have a dinner party uh, fact, right? Uh, say- I mentioned it to you, but I don't know, we didn't really discuss it. We, yeah, have but- a th- we have a thing at the end we call it dinner party facts, and we usually ask our expert to tell something like obscure, or interesting about the subject that other people might not know. You could probably pull something up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's always some. We've heard some really interesting ones, like uh, like uh, uh, Dracula and Frankenstein were invented on the same day at the same party. Yeah. Right. Like that's an interesting one. Just things that you can say at parties are interesting. And so we go to we go to Wayne. <laughs> yeah. We go to Wayne. We said we said, "What's your dinner party fact?" And he didn't. For stand up comedy. He didn't think it had to be on his subject. Yeah. He thought it was just some interesting fact, and he went. Do you know, out of all the slavery in the world, America only took in 10%. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I think it was, there was 12 million slaves and only 100,000 went to the United States. Yeah, yeah. And we were all sitting there like... And he goes, and I don't know what to do with that fact. <laughs> and That's then I, a, yeah. I saw him at the improv like a week later and he goes, yeah, that was, that was bad. I, no, it was hilarious. That's one of the funniest really funny. things ever. Like people have mentioned it to us. Like, That'll I, change the dinner party, yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah. That'll totally like... If I ever go to a dinner party, I'm, really, I'm good to go. You're going to lead that one. <laughs> I've used it. It's worked. Uh, so now when I... And I didn't... Man, I apologize. But now with our extras, I always say, and it's got to be on the subject. I always say this like when I'm talking... And on the subject. So anyways, we, that's at the end. So, so comedy. Uh, improv. We're going to be talking about improv, improv comedy, yeah. Improv comedy. Uh, I, I, I would like to do improv comedy. I've never done improv comedy. I just did my first ever show at the UCB, Pinot Noir. Pino Noir. So you did Noir. improv comedy. You just said Where, you didn't. Well, but I was the guest. I had to come on and tell a story, and I was quite nervous as well. And um, but it, it is it is uh, quite the the rush, the old improv. It's uh, but you were great. I did fine. No, yeah. you were great. We were talking yeah. about you yesterday about it. I have, a, I have an improv story of some sorts, right? Well, with my, uh-huh. Before we go into the thing, this is just... So Mindy Sterling, the great Mindy Sterling, uh, played the mother in... Dan Bacadol's mother in my sitcom. Okay. And and so me and Dan Bacadol, we uh, spent most of our days teasing Mindy, right? <laughs> One of the fun things we would do is we would sit out the front of the window of her trailer and we would list all of the, the actors from best to worst <laughs> and, we would, and, we, and act like we were just having a chat and we'd never get to a name. <laughs> That's a good bet. That's a really good bet. <laughs> anyway, so, so, so Mindy, I just improv the scene with her in the sitcom. I go, I was having lunch with her. She goes, I teach classes. I said, oh, I've never done a class. I'd really love to do a class. I'd love to do one of your classes one day. And she said, she goes, I don't do beginners. She goes, I won't do beginners. I said, but we just fucking did a scene together. She goes, the rules are the rules. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, but you're on my sitcom. At what stage? At what stage do I get to leapfrog something? Yeah. Nah, nope, nah. Sorry. She's bloody strict Mindy. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to introduce Matt again. Matt, Matt Walsh is an actor, comedian, writer, and director. This is how we do the show normally. So you've seen him in movies and television shows such as Veep, Old School, Elf, Step Brothers, The Hangover, Due Date, and Role Models. Matt Walsh is also a founding member of the Upright Citizens Brigade. You can find him on Instagram again at Mr. Matt Walsh. Listen to his podcast, a Veep Rewatch, Second in Command, I'm sorry, a Veep Rewatch. And uh, also, again, those dates, uh, February 29th, wow. March 1st and 2nd, Atlanta and Boca Raton. We'll put all that so on. So many plugs. Yeah, wow. we're done. We're done with the plugs. Thank now. you. Yeah, but that, I, normally, you know, that's how we do it. And I just okay. I just felt like I have, professional. OCD. I have OCD. Sure, so. sure. Uh, so what we're going to do here is I, I'm gonna, I I'm, already know what the first question is. I'm going to ask Jim a series of questions about improv. Uh, and at the end of him answering those, you're going to grade him on his accuracy, zero through 10. Uh, and then... 
What's going on? Jack's trying to get an autograph. <laughs> right right now. Now. <laughs> Normally, you get autographs after. He, 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 right was, he was holding the book. He was holding the book <laughs> underneath the table, looking at me like, "What are you really gonna do?" I was waiting for the time, but then it and got then weird. Like, oh. So, like, I guess now I have to do it. The, to- the time. The time is at the yeah, end of the podcast. That's staying for the whole podcast. Keep <laughs> this here now, in case I have to refer to something. <laughs> That's good. I'm not going to do well in this because I don't know all the all the rules. I, I don't know the rules. I, I've always enjoyed going to improv. I once saw this act. Uh, the first improv act I saw I was probably about 17 years old, and they were touring Australia, and they were called the the three Canadians or yeah. four Canadians, and there's like six of them. That was the joke. Oh, yeah, and it was Australia. Yeah, then they, no, 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 they were Canadians who oh, were coming okay. over. But it was the first time I'd seen the whole well, name of place, name of this, name of that. I never, never seen that before. I thought it was very interesting. All right, so I'm gonna ask. We'll start over here. Uh, Jeff, I'm gonna ask Jim a series of questions on improv. At the end of him answering him, you can grade him on his accuracy, whatever you think. Zero through ten, ten's the best. Okay. Uh, mm. Jack's gonna grade him on his confidence answering him. I'm gonna grade him on how hungry I am. <laughs> and uh, it and, makes uh, Jack at, laugh every time. At the, uh, yeah, yeah. Jack, thinks, Jack thinks that's funny. <laughs> And at the end of answering that, I'll, I'll, I'll add all those scores together. And um, there's three categories here, Jim. You and Jack have to do uh, like 10 to 20 seconds of improv. If you score 20 through 30, Jim and Jack are on the road trip. 11 through 20, Jack works at the Apple Store and is helping Jim. 0 through 10, Jim and Jack are at a bar and Jim is angry What are you Jack. talking about? I had to Jack that book. He didn't even know what he was meant to do. And then it was like... <laughs> And then he, I was he, waiting. And then, and then he, he looked at me and he looked at his bag and he grabbed a sharpie. It was all fucking dumb. My whole life's improv. I don't plan any of this. <laughs> of course. <All> right. <laughs> Question one: What is improv or improvisational theater? Um, improvisational theater. Improv is when you improvise. The mm-hmm. word improvise comes from the Latin to make up. Yeah. Um, and improvisational theater is so it would be a theater show without a script. That is um, done from uh, w- within a, a, a certain level of structure. So you can't just you can't just go out there and go and roll around in your own shit. That's performance art. That's a different thing. Looking at you, Yoko, right? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yoko listening? was never doing that one where she was just cutting material. Ah, wow. Like this, and they were like, "Fuck, good improv that, uh, <laughs> right?" So that's don't mix it up with with performance art. Okay, but it, it's it's a form of comedy within the maybe not even comedy. Maybe maybe you could improvise dramas. I don't know of that happening, but that would be interesting. Yeah, the West Wing was all yeah, improvised. I, I heard. Wow, that's yeah. impressive. Yeah. I, I I'm heard, kidding. I, I didn't know that. I heard his Schindler's List started off about a guy that worked at Walmart, and it really just anyway. <laughs> um, so, right. um, you good? Yeah, yeah I, I, think, think I, think, I think I think I think I, I said the. What right is things. the earliest known use of improv? Like you know, not use in discussion, but like it was when Mary went. No, nah, I'm a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's a lie. That's a, yeah, <laughs> and she was just like, it's, "Yeah, fucking virgin me." And, and Joseph was like, "Are you sure? Pretty sure." What about like organized, <laughs> like at a theater, or not even a theater? Uh, orga- just just organized. Or maybe it's a performance. Let's say that. Uh, that my, I, don't, I, don't my, know, I don't know the answer. My so. answer for all questions, early entertainment is Forest Korak Vaudeville. Vaudeville. Uh, vaudeville, yeah. Vaudeville. There would have been something going on That's in right, Vaudeville. That's right, you say Vaudeville, too. Yeah. Vaudeville? He really pronounces that E. He always says Vaudeville. 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 Va- vaudeville? Vaudeville. It's very respectful. It makes <laughs> yeah. it, it elevates it a bit. <laughs> vaudeville. My uncle, vaudeville. My uncle came from Vaudeville. <laughs> okay, stop it, saying it. Which is a town. We're going to the next Next to Smallville. <laughs> who, are the key, who are key figures in the development of modern improvisational theater? There's a guy... That wrote all the rules mm-hmm. that people dig, and I think he's the bloke who started Second City, uh, and I'm not sure of his name. Okay. Uh, and then, apart from that, I'm going to give it to Gene Wilder. <laughs> <laughs> who, who is? Who is? I don't know if I'm saying their name right. Like Ola Spol- it, it was meant Spol- to be a bean factory until he got involved in the script. <laughs> <laughs> I don't and know Heinz I, Beans. I, I don't if, know if you I'm, want to fart <laughs> rapidly. <laughs> I said the name already. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Who is Viola Spolin? Um, You're not going to know. So Viola just, Spolin. She's the godmother of improv. Yeah, it's probably right. Yeah. What is the oldest running improv theater? Um, I... I, I mm, 
I'm going. I, I I don't know. I'm going to say Second City in Chicago is the oldest sort of continuous running. I, I would assume that's older than the Toronto one, but I bet you're going to give me something in New York or LA. What is the difference between short form and long form improv? Um, would it be the length. <laughs> Uh, it would be the big yeah, one, probably. Yeah. Um, short form, uh, long long form would be um, something you could put into a scene where you just keep going until it's forever. Or and short form is where it has to have a resolution at the end. Mm, that's good. What is theater sports? Oh. Um, wow! Why did that, you make that sound? Yeah. Okay. Cause I have a memory. Uh, okay, because okay. <laughs> okay, I have a little bit of a prejudice against improv. It's just a small one, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. I've got, Fair, okay. share it. I'll, I'll yeah. tell you why. So, so I really started out, I, I did a little bit of comedy in Australia, but my real sort of learning of comedy was in the UK. And the UK improv groups versus comedians, there's a segregation. Uh, the improv kids are always rich kids who can go to the Edinburgh, Edinburgh Festival and they can lose a lot of money because they're rich kids. And also, even if we go to the Goodies or Monty Python, which are sketch comedy people, but it's a similar world and they probably did improv, they were all Cambridge footlights, right? So everything... So, so there's a certain poshness involved with improv and working class is for the stand-up people and it hasn't and then when i came to america that doesn't exist at all there's poor kids doing um, improv and rich yeah. kids doing stand-up and poor kids doing stand-up and rich kids doing improv everyone's doing it but in, in britain there's definitely a divide what was the question what are theater sports oh okay <laughs> <laughs> you had a memory you yeah. didn't share a memory now, now here we go so i was in manchester and there was a group of stand-up comics who weren't getting into the manchester comedy store and i like i wish them well i don't remember any of their names yeah. um but they started a theater sports group so they could get the monday night spot at the comedy store in mm. manchester and basically you could get on the team um if you just asked they needed people. The team. The, the, the theatre sports team that mm -hmm. competed or whatever. Anyway, they thought they got so good at it, right, that they went, we're going off to America and we're going to compete against the American teams. And I'm like, that's the equivalent of the Australian baseball team going, <laughs> we're going to take on the Dominican Republic. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, like I'm like I'm like oh don't do that you yeah. haven't even been competing against good so it's basically you can win points and stuff like that people yell out topics and then you jump in and you do the improv things but then there's a bit of a scoring system okay what is yes and oh um it's it's the, the I think it's almost like the basis of improv or something it's like it's like so so you, you're not meant to say no and you're not meant to... I'm probably wrong in this because I haven't read up or anything. My wife's doing improv classes at UCB at the moment. She like probably I'm, has this book. My wife does. My, my, wife is, my wife's right into improv, right? And, and I know that you're not meant to say no in a scene because you're mm -hmm. meant to go with what the other person is saying and you're meant to say yes and add something to it so they can say yes and add something to that as well and so everything can flow and keep moving because there's nothing worse than hey, I, oh, I'm really tired right now I just fell off a bridge uh, did you see me? no no and this is space yeah, 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 yeah. No, and I, yeah, and I'm in a rocket ship. Yeah. Or the classic Steve Carell, uh, Michael Scott. I've got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said to my wife, I said, if you haven't, because she does improv class, and I go, just every scene, just rip off your face and say you're a lizard. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's going to love it. <laughs> uh, why is Chicago important to improv comedy? Because of Second City. And so Second City is in Chicago and in Toronto, and they've basically given us everyone. Not everyone, right? But when you think of uh, Dan Aykroyd and, and uh, Bill Murray and Tina Fey and uh, Polar, and, and then so you go, and then you go up to, to Toronto, and we've got Rick Moranis and, and John Candy and um, the, 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 what's the name of the lady out of um, Bloody Home Catherine Alone? Catherine O'Hara. Catherine O'Hara. Right? What, what group was Madam? You said it right. <laughs> I, 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 be, I believe Matt was from Second City, Chicago, uh -huh. and that's and I'm saying that because 
Dan Bakadil was second city Chicago, and I believe the two of them go back quite a long way. And here's another question. What group is Matt Walsh a founding member of? I said UCB. It. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't have said it. UCB. He's, he's got a book, man. That's why I brought there. the book out. I was saving <laughs> it for the end, ideas. but then it was the, the question was tipped. It's okay. the last yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. And that other question was, what are some names of more well-known improv groups? You just said that already. So, okay. Do you know, that, you know when I was at the UCB, I was there, and there's a photo of me and Chris Rock standing on the UCB stage, and it looks like the two of us had just finished the show there. And me and, yeah. him, were, me and him were literally just standing at the front of the stage chatting like really? hey, yeah, I was about to do the Pinot Noir show, and he was at the show before that because I believe his cousin his was, niece in, a was show, in a show, or his niece was in a show. Oh wow! And he was in the audience watching it, and so the two of us were just sort of standing there like this, and then and then people who were like looking at like different things or that were all acting like they were texting. There's photos of every angle. Of, of the you two, guys hanging of out? Of the two of us hanging out. And oh, then, I took that photo and they put it up. Yeah, but yeah, my wife it. took one, the thing your friend Cam <laughs> took one. And then there was they started coming out like the thing. I was like, oh, that's good. Oh, I'm happy to have the photo. <laughs> Um, it's a good photo. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Matt. How did Jim do in his knowledge of improv? Uh, Pretty good. 10, 10 the best. Uh, 10. I'll give him a 7.5. 7 7.5. Yes, and? Yeah. How confident uh, was he? 7. 7, 14 and a half. Uh, which one do I want you guys to do? How hungry are you? Yeah. Is that what's next? How hungry am I? Uh, yeah, up 10. Lunch. I'm pretty hungry. Um, so that's 24.5. So you nice. got Jim and Jack are on a road trip. You got to do like 30 seconds of that. Normally, I just make up, like, uh, try to make jokes there. How many seconds? It's, it's, I don't normally do this, but because of the, the category. I don't know. Just do it. That's your, that's your uh, I'm hungry. Your where, suggestion. Did, where, where should we stop to eat? There's a sign over here. It says there's a McDonald's, a Burger King, and a Denny's. Let's keep driving until we see okay. you in and out. And see. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was really good, guys. That was really hilarious. Does that count? Does that count? Did I stop him because I said, let's keep going until we go in and out? I and scene. It, just, <laughs> and scene stop. That's like a director saying cut. That's and no. You that's became a, the director <laughs> at that point. And, and we're said, good. And I think scene. the audience got what they wanted out of that. That was really good. I, I, I the few uh. times I've been asked to improv, like, I, I, me. Why are you getting, why would you get nervous? You, me and Dane got very comfortable with each other improvising by the time we got into season two we've done 26 episodes together or something like that and and he's just so giving with how how he does it that that you sort of makes you feel like you're a lot funnier and so i used to be very happy when i did it with him but no one else yeah. no one else i like doing have you it done with. stand up matt Never? uh i did it for about a year in chicago you did yeah it's tough trade it's yeah good. so with mixed results yeah. but i think it is someone like dan a lot of improvisers feel the same way. I prefer to play with people I sort of am more comfortable with. Mm. So veterans or people I came up with, I don't, and much like Mindy, I don't really want to start with someone on stage who's just beginning to learn the rules. Like mm. I, I've put in my time. So I prefer. No, to no, like, I, I understand yeah, that. Yeah, it's like I prefer to play with people that uh, are supportive and generous. Yeah. Now you just saw what you're capable of right well. now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Mindy was out. If I was on this podcast twenty six times, we would get we would get some chem- we would get some chemistry. We would develop chemistry. I'm a, ge- I'm a, I'm a generous collaborator. There's a, there's, a, there's a story I might have told it before, but there's a story that me, me Dan Bacadol, and DJ Cool. You know, DJ. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah. So, so the three of us got so comfortable in our roles that we never learnt our lines before we showed up because we'd always get to set. Then they'd go, they'd set up the lights. That would take 45 minutes. The three of us would sit around, bash out the scene. Yeah. Da, 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 this is what we're doing the scene, right? We get real comfortable with each other. And then we'd always request wide shot first so we could fuck up. And then because I was, it was my show, I got the last close up. And by then we'd already done it 15 times and yeah. I knew everything and we're good. The next scene, they're setting up, give me another 15 minutes. One time the three of us walk in. We haven't, not, it's not that we've only briefly looked at our, um, our script. We don't know what the scene is. We you wrote the show. Yeah, we, I have no I idea. I have no idea what we're filming, <laughs> right? Someone's going to hand it to us. I, I, wardrobe had left an outfit for. We always basically in the same clothes, right? <laughs> and, and wardrobe and me and Dan, we were all like w- going along, and and uh, and we we get into the set, and uh, they go, "All right, boys, ready to go." So DJ sat down in his wheelchair, and then I just looked at Dan, and I thought, "Fuck!" I thought I was the only one. I went, oh, I haven't learnt this. I sat down in my chair and then Dan's standing up like this. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they went, action. 
<laughs> I never felt more like a schoolboy in trouble in my fucking life. You hadn't life. even looked at the sides. We, we didn't know the premise That's amazing. of the scene. That's amazing. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't know the premise. We went, we... Uh, we don't we don't know what's going on <laughs> right and it's your show yeah. and it's your show and i wrote the episode yeah. <laughs> we don't know what's going on and they went you boys go and learn it really quickly we walked out with there was no cigarettes no nothing we were, we were straight down all right what are you doing fucking this show is sponsored by better help uh i'm a big fan of the therapy uh look what are some things going on with you in your life? Hey, how's it? No, just the general public. What's what's uh, going on in in twenty twenty four? Are you crushing it, or you, you're not crushing it, or mm-hmm. you, you you're crushing it, but, but you don't know why you're crushing it? You got imposter syndrome. Yep. Bloody, you get yourself a bit of better help around New Year's. We get obsessed on how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. Maybe. You finally organised one part of your space and you want to tackle another bit of your brain. Or maybe you're taking supplements every morning and now you want to actually eat breakfast too. Therapy helps you find strength so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. Uh, I love the therapy. I had some uh, things over Christmas that I needed talking through with people and some personal issues that I I don't want to mention to the public, but luckily I could mention them to a therapist and lighten my load. I'm a big, big fan of therapy. I would even argue therapy is the reason I'm still here. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash IDK today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash IDK. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spendings, and helps lower your bills. I was skeptical. I was skeptical. I did it. I used the code. I had a cat. I went in there. I had so many. So I had subscriptions for things I never knew I had subscriptions for, for channels in other countries. What? I had, yeah. Wow, what are you ta- wow. Because I've tried these other yeah, subscribing yeah, yeah, yeah. things. Yeah, because you know what you do? Because you're always trying to, like, you're just like, fine, I'll subscribe to this. They like the, they made you watch that playoff game on Peacock, so everybody subscribed yeah, to it. Yeah, I subscribed to some things in Britain and yeah. Australia, and I don't live in those places. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was a lot of money. I can see all my subscriptions in one place and see if there's something that I don't want. I can cancel it with a tap. I never have to get on the phone with customer service. Yeah, They'll good. even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months of wasted money and negotiate lower bills for you up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of the bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and help members save an average of $720 a year. What have you got to lose with over 500 million in cancel subscriptions? 500 million. How many things did you say you cancelled? About a million of that 500 million was responsible for me. <laughs> no, uh, five things. Five things I cancelled straight off. And then there was a few things where I'm like, oh, I might watch that again. <laughs> it reminded me that I had it. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash I-D-K-A-T. Idacat. That's rocketmoney.com slash Idacat. Rocketmoney.com slash Idacat. Yeah, but it is like stand-up and remember, it's so, I mean... There are very few stand-ups that are good. I think you're a good actor, but... but Me it, but, and Matt have done a but, scene together on the golf course. Yeah. You don't, you don't know that. Your sketch. There's what do you mean? I wrote that. Oh, so far as wrote <laughs> the sketch. Yeah, uh, I wrote that sketch. It was out there. It yeah. was a sketch about me buying golf balls yeah. from Steven Seagal. No, no, no. You, you had hit a golf ball to his yard. Yeah, yeah. I was selling And him. this is from the Connor Moore show. This yes. is the, and you had hit a golf ball in his yard, and you went over to go look at it, and you said, hey, did you see a golf ball? And, and then he's reading a newspaper, and he's like, no, I haven't seen a golf ball, but I have these for sale. And you saw it with your initials on there, and you went through all the uh, combination of other people's initials that could have been. Then you ended up buying at the end a... Uh, uh, a, a range, range rider that had SS on here like a Steven Seagal suit. Like, yeah. it, it just turned out <laughs> it was remember. owned by yeah. a Nazi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he had a business. That was my yeah. favorite line. He's like, this is a place of business. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this is a place of business. That made me laugh every time he said that. Uh, um, 
But yeah, I just you know when you watch comedies, that uh, sketch is big in Israel, by the way. Is it? <laughs> Weirdly, <laughs> weirdly, we'll get stopped on the street. It turns out, I, I'm so famous. Can I you guys do that? I can't walk down the Gaza Strip. That's how famous I am. Oh, wow. God, no, cut it out, Jack. Uh, cut it out. No, cut it out. Make a note. That's the problem with improv. You get in trouble all the fucking time. Yeah, it starts. Yeah, you, you got a note for that one? Uh, it's good. Okay. No, it's good. If I just said I can't walk down the streets of Israel, it still would have gotten a good enough laugh. But I went for the Gaza Strip. One step too far. Well, my point is, is that um, just every time you watch uh, the, the the best comedic actors always come from improv. In my opinion, I, I just well, so yeah, so so all the movie stars yeah. always come from improv. Now, occasionally you get a movie star that's a stand-up comic, like Eddie Murphy or Kevin Hart or, yeah. or something like that. Steve Martin was a good example. Yeah. Steve Martin was a good example of a guy who really yeah, you would have, so. you, you would have, the best if example. you didn't know, you would think he was an improv guy. Yeah, and Ben Stiller was kind of a sketch guy. Yeah, I would yeah, call him, yeah. but he wasn't like a stand-up, really. No, not really. No. Um, I mean, you know, obviously Kevin Hart and Chris Rock—they've done it, but I mean, and nothing against them, they're just not as to me when I watch them. Like you're not because you, you don't have these skills. I no, and, and and the great scenes. I now I watch movies and I sort of go, I bet you they improvise this scene, or because you, you listen to the dialogue and you went, no one's written that down. That dialogue's never been written down. It doesn't. It's not sensical enough to have written down to have someone to do. It has to have happened in the moment where people yeah. have said it. I guess Eddie Murphy is a good one. There's and, some good ones. And I, okay, so so okay, so do you find as an improv performer that um, you have to like the people? Okay, so so famously, um, Chevy Chase and Bill Murray didn't like each other. Yeah, that's right? the word. Yeah. So and and that was in Chevy Chase's biography, and I've heard it. Yeah, so this isn't just. Re- and then you look at that scene in Caddyshack, and they reckon they improvised that scene, and it's maybe the best scene where he hits it into his, his the, the the groundkeeper's yard, and he looks for his ball. Yeah, I think that's my favorite scene in the whole movie. It is a great where he pulls out the leaf blower at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think that was a written scene. I don't think the. I think the comic. My guess would be. Because Brian Doyle Murray and Harold Ramis maybe wrote that movie, mm. and I suspect that it was a com- there was a comedic engine to that scene, meaning all the stuff that Bill Murray had in his place, and Chevy's looking for his ball. So they kind of had uh, a show and tell, if you will, set up in the scene, so Chevy could lift something up, and Bill could improvise something funny there, or they might have had a few jokes ready to go if he picks up the sandwich. Or if he mentions the lake, he's like, pool, pond, you know, I'll swim in whatever you got. Like, those I'm sure they had ready to go. But the comic engine was designed so both of them had something equally joyful or fun to play. Mm. So I'm assuming that, yeah, they're probably what they're pros. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So they yeah. want, once they're there on set and people are waiting and it's like, we got to shoot this, guys. Put your shit, you know, put your pettiness away. But maybe even that tension. Or they just buried it years ago. Quite honestly, they probably just... You're a movie star. I'm a movie star. Let's just make this good. You know what I mean? That always helps when you're both movie stars. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. That's that's why I still have a lot of enemies. (laughs) 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 Just waiting to become a movie star. But even that show and tell, that's a term from... Is that a, I don't even I've never you never heard of show and tell a you comic show school? game I guess like a comic dynamic that exists that both of you guys have characters like Chevy's the member and Bill's the you know grounds crew and he's sort of poor and messy and who knows you know he smokes weed and is trying to kill a gopher so there's explosives and so who knows what we're gonna find in there but that's a fun design for a comedic scene so you're the rich guy looking for your ball and you're going into the lair of this maniac groundskeeper who really just wants to be friends with you, you know? That's great. That's yeah. So that was carved up, I'm sure, in the script. Yeah, I, I just got the douche. I've told the Harold Ramis story before here, have I? I don't think so. Uh, it still upsets me to this day, and I'll never get to say anything. Look, okay, so I'm doing the Chicago Comedy Festival, and they put on a showcase nasty show thing which the oh, yeah. the, th- the three people I don't know, if you've told it, but yeah. I don't you you know it no yeah. no no I know I know right it's gonna... right and so it was me Louis C K and Patrice yeah. O'Neill right and this was before Louis C K was hugely famous and before Patrice was dead so right. it was that long ago right and um uh, we were in the Chicago theater and we were sitting backstage and how Harold Ramis walks Ramis walks in. And just sits down right away, and he's like, "All three of you were really great. I really enjoyed Aww. it like this, right?" 
And this is back. I was probably there was. I was definitely drunk, and I may have been coked up. I don't. I don't. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I wasn't. You know, I wasn't rude per se, but I just brushed him off and just went, "What? Who? Who's? Who's? This, who's this guy? This is like, I was just like, and I just remember thinking, who's this fucking arsy cunt <laughs> who's just walked into the dressing room and just sat down, yeah. thinking like he was some fucking old bloke who just sneaked backstage or something, <laughs> and I went, and I went like this, yeah, thanks, man. And I got up and walked away. Like, I'm not sitting next to that guy like uh, that. And then he leaves and they're like, wow. And I'm like, fuck, it's Igor, man. <laughs> and I still to this day, I just, whenever I think, I see him in a movie, I go, yeah. oh, I love that guy. And, yeah. I, was, and I was rude. Yeah. That's why and, a movie star. Yeah. And he made some yeah. of my favorite movies and yeah. I was rude. So that's why you should always be rude to everyone. Keep it consistent. <laughs> oh, wait. I thought that's what you took away from that. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to change. Yeah. Uh, so what is improv or improvisational theater? Jim said it's when you improvise. It comes from Latin to make up. I think that's right. Um, theater without a script. There's a certain level of structure. Uh, I, I would assume that there is dramatic improv as well as comedic improv. And basically, yeah, like going into the short form versus long form. We had comedy sports in Chicago, which is, I think, the same as theater sports. In a short form, you have a game. The game will be almost like a Mad Lib. It's like, at some point, we're going to do a scene, and right before the adjective comes, I'm going to point to you, the audience, and you get to yell what adjective describes him. So you kind of know what's going to be funny about it. Or we're going to stop the scene and rewind it and do it in you know, a different movie genre that you, the audience, are going to give us. Or... Whatever, there's there's something that is basically the punchline already underlined for the audience to know their job and what's going to make it funny. The mad lib of it all is, for lack of a better word. In long form, you get a simple suggestion, song lyric, just one word, theme, topic, and idea, and then you just run with it. You try to incorporate it for half hour, 45 minutes, whatever that might be, and, and you can also get a monologue off of it and then unpack that monologue for information for the scenes that follow like you did in the Pinot Noir show. But long form has no clear comedic underlying sort of game and there's not a lot of audience interruption. Right. So that's that's the big difference between long form and... Uh, I mean, so what would it come... The long form would have come before the audience interruption -y bit, right? The long form is just going off of one simple suggestion. And then it can take any shape it wants. The short form is dictated by the game you're playing. If it's like rewind the scene, we're going to rewind it in a different genre. If it's like Mad Libby, you guys are going to give us the adjective. Now we're going to do the same scene. Sometimes they'll do the same scene and then you'll give us a different accent to, to do it. You know what I mean? So it's prescribed what's going to be funny about the version of the short scene. So I'd change it to New Zealand to really throw things up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so that's my boring answer to that sort of thing. But, uh, do we know what the earliest known use of improv was? I was, was thinking like Commedia dell'arte was sort of, they would have archetypes like, you know, live theater, and it'd be like, I'll be the landlord. And he'd sort of just kind of live interact with the audience, and the audience would boo him, and he could sort of, like, so he would get dressed up as what the is landlord. This? The, the Commedia dell'arte was like sort of the presentational, I think it came out of Italy. I don't know exactly. Vaudeville. vaudeville. It probably yeah. predates vaudeville. What about pantomime? Pantomime is like street, to me, that's like street performing. Oh, no, of. no, no, no. So pan, pantomime. Oh, a pantomime. Pan, I know what you're talking about. Pantomime is a British phenomenon. Yeah, around the holidays, right? Happens at Christmas. Yes. And yeah. so every small town and theatre in yes. the country, every town hall will do a pantomime. And what you really want is to get one actor off EastEnders or a Coronation Street, someone from a soap in Australia, whatever. if you can bag one of them. And you'll do Jack and the Beanstalk or Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And there's a few rules that always happen. Men always dress like women and put on that, you know, that Monty Python, ooh, he's a bad boy, that type of a voice, right? <laughs> and all the kids come from all the schools and they sit there and then you go, ooh, I'm looking for Jack Horner. Do you know where he is? And the kids would go, he's behind you. And then you turn around, the guy would... This would on the streets? No, 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 this is in oh. every theatre. Oh, okay. This is in every theatre. Okay, like, theater. like, 
this is just a British thing. It's yeah. mental. They, they, even um, you're not see, improv. Doesn't sound do, like you improv. ever seen like uh, extras, Ricky Gervais extras? Yeah, of course, yeah. There's a bit where his character plays a genie, and he's like, "Ooh, that one, yeah, yeah, right?" Yeah. So, and then they go, "He's behind you," and then he goes, "Oh no, he's not." And then the audience will go, "Oh yes, he is," and then they'll go, "Oh no." Now, if you've never seen it, and you're sitting amongst a, a theatre full of British people who all know the words that back and forth yeah. for each play. It's fucking mental. It's it's a really Are weird. Are you saying that in a good or a bad Yeah, way? is that bad mental or good yeah. mental? I like kitsch British stuff. Yeah. I yeah. like kitschy British stuff. I think I think it's I, I think it's um it's not something I want to watch again, but I appreciate that they they're doing it and they're not giving up on it. It's very distinct. <laughs> I think I saw one at the Pasadena Playhouse out here one year. Yeah. They tried to do it and to some success, but it was based around a fairy tale or something. You need to have the audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They you, need, yeah. You, you'd have like Snow White, and then like one of the big things in the post would be like with real dwarves. Yes, and you're like, oh, they're they're a big they're, part geez, of it. Wow. Geez, they've uh, put some money into this one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So the earliest now, I, I, were you done answering that? Sorry. The, yeah, okay. that's my best. But I was okay. just saying that maybe the Panto thing had something like, like okay. So so when we say, would you call Monty Python an improv group? Sketch group. They're just a sketch them. group. Yeah. Right, right. So same with the goodies and all that type of stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right. Peter Cook and those yeah. guys. Peter yeah. Cook, Dudley Moore. Oh, yeah. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, God, who good. who yeah. are the key figures in the development of modern improvisational theater? Is it Gene Wilder? Oh, you, also said, you said the guy who started Second City and Gene Wilder. Yeah. yeah. There's like the the Del Close is the guy out of Chicago. Del he Close. was a big uh, forefather of what we did, you know, coming out of Chicago with the UCB. I studied with him. And then before that, there was like the committee, which Del was sort of a part of, which came out of the University of Chicago. And then they kind of traveled to different cities like St. Louis, and they did these reviews, but they would also – incorporate improv to sort of use it to create sketches but sometimes they would just perform it and then there's something in st louis called the kitchen rules which are like the three earliest it was just two people like elaine may who was with mike nichols that director they were two two of the early founders of improv in chicago and they would do really intellectual stuff but i think they codified early improv with the kitchen rules and that's it's almost like my cocktail party fact, but uh, okay. I'll get back to that. Back so to what that. What are the kitchen rules? We're going to have to have somebody look it up, but is that cheating for an expert no, to say? Because it's the really. kind of thing I could tell you. Like wait, wait, I'm wait. sure it's like in the world of like yes and and agreeing uh, agreeing on the environment. If you just go like That's not cheating. St. Louis, fine. Yeah, we, St. Louis kitchen rules of improv, I believe. There's three. Yeah. All right. Okay, first of all, if you're listening in your car right now and you're with one other person right now, please follow the rules and improvise this scene. You're no longer in a car, you're in a tractor. And go. <laughs> Uh, so rule number one, a good improviser habitually accepts the offers made to him. Yeah. Uh, two, a good improviser habitually makes active choices rather than passive ones. What, mm -hmm. does that, what does that mean? Active choices is like, uh, doctor, can you look at my knee? And then the other character going, yeah, I could. As opposed to, all right, get up on the table and mm. ma make oh, it more right, active. So more You're active. contributing the scene by making it more active as opposed to just not giving. Yeah, I could. Uh, yeah. In a minute, and it, like, it, that's not really helping the scene. Is it one of you can be only one of you can be crazy? You can't have crazy on crazy. It's harder to pull off. You can do anything in improv. You could you could have crazy and crazy, but it's harder. But like those hard fast rules don't exist. Yeah, yeah, straight, but in general, it's hard. In a, yeah. In general, it helps. The last one is good improviser justifies. Yeah. So if that's true, what else is true is kind of the rule there. So like, if you said. Uh, I don't know. Like, you look like a zombie. I look like a zombie. Why? And then you would have to kind of justify why you made that oh, yeah. label. Well, I don't know. Because it looks like his flesh yeah, is falling Yeah, because your shirt's ripped. And you do have a hole in your cheek. So you're sort of yeah. building you, it. you got a skull on your T-shirt. It looks like he was being you're, nice. you're, you're, you're following a zombie you're sporting. Nice <laughs> That's yeah. the stand-up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, stand -ups and they nasty. bust balls hard. Yeah. Nasty, <laughs> nasty people. No, no, you guys are tougher though. Okay, I, I no, would we're say very okay, mean. Okay, yeah. so yeah. so stand up comedy dressing rooms. If you're not match fit, 
Yeah. It, it's a ruthless place. A stand- what does match fit mean? Me uh, means if you're not at the peak of your powers, when like mentally, yeah, or, or just or just up for it, you got to go in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. like, 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 yeah. like yeah, yeah. Fuck being on stage. You're <laughs> yeah, yeah. All, you're all by yourself there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But going into the comedy store dressing room, and if there's a certain group of comics or any dressing room in the world. You gotta, you gotta be on your game. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Is that the same with improv? Do you guys no. raz each other as much? I feel because I've been backstage and when my wife things like, it feels like everyone's very supportive. Supportive. Yeah. Like, 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 like. I see stand up comics. If you've had a really good show and everyone is like going, oh fuck, he's killing, he's killing, he's killing. Oh, he's coming back, and then we all like, like, we haven't listened. We yeah. all sit back in a chair. <laughs> no, no. I did, I, okay. I did when I did Conan. Jim was there with other oh, yeah. friends of mine. And like I'm walking back after after he'd, the show, he'd stormed, he'd yeah, yeah, stormed yeah. Conan, and, and there's a yeah. walk back from the stage, yeah. and we were all watching it on the screen. And I was dead proud of him, yeah, but, yeah. but was, and, and this is what Jim does. Like, okay, so we're all gonna tell me did good, right? Oh hey hey, how you doing? Like that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's like the pinnacle of my career. I'm like. I know what you're doing, but it still hurts. Hey, that, 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 you know, he's here. You know, well, <laughs> the, the shirt looked good. <laughs> yeah. I also I just made a fool of myself in front of Charlie Day. So oh, I, yeah, yeah, I yeah. told him I loved him and said, I love your work. Yeah, Charlie was Day bad, yeah. was the other guest. Yeah. And the forest did so good, he got asked over to the couch. Uh, and oh. Charlie did say, he said, ah, ah, we were doing the thing at the end. You're just standing there. And he goes, oh, really? That was... Funny. Really loved your set. It was funny, and I, and I just go, "I love you." And I'm like, "Fuck!" <laughs> and then I'm like, "I'm right, gonna go back to the dressing room." And then I'm like walking, like I meant that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I love you." Those never you. go well. That's it. Those moments never yeah. go well. Yeah, if you need um, someone you really appreciate. Like every time I'm on a late night show, there's always someone way more interesting than me who's the other guest, and you never get to meet him. Yeah. One time, Army Hammer popped by to say hello once. He's very interesting. Yeah, he's yeah. an interesting fellow. <laughs> he, was yeah. he was hungry. And he, he popped by to say that he liked my stand-up, which was nice. And then I'm thinking, so the other so Margot Robbie was one time the other guest, and I, I that was the one where I lingered in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Like, I was just standing around like my room, like just Where do like, I go? checking the structure <laughs> of the of the doorway like that. Because I thought she might no, she's Australian. We yeah, have small we world. have that in common. Yeah. We, you know, mate. Oh, this guy. If she's walked by and she doesn't make eye contact, doesn't know me, I just thicken up the accent a bit, and she'll she'll go, "Where are you from?" And I'll go, "Oh, where are you from? Who are you?" Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so that- that, I think improv. I mean, I don't know. You is more supportive than like you're saying because I. It's like it, it's a. Stand up's the hardest. Th- I've said this a million times. Stand up's the hardest thing in the world. Like to be a good stand up consistently is the hardest thing in the world. So. Props to that, but like, uh, but that's why I'm such an excellent plastic surgeon. In the past time. <laughs> <laughs> but improv is a collaborative art form. You're building off of someone else's. Like, do you remember that show, Tough Crowd? Yeah, that uh, Colin Quinn had Colin, on like yeah. Comedy Central. Well, that was before my time in America. Yeah, you'd have four comics. I went on that them. once, and it, and I thought they it was did? like, yeah, oh. I thought it was like almost like a pitch meeting. Like yeah. we'll come in and like build a joke together. It no. was just like. You say something wrong, and then this guy comes and dunks on you. I'm like, yeah, fuck. Yeah, yeah. There's a fan <laughs> I don't like this. It's uh, like you, you really have to watch what you say, and that that was the whole show. Or like, it's almost like a friar's roast. Like when you sit on a fr- I've done, I've sat on the dais where you, where people are just going to go at you, mm. and it's for charity. But I just, I have thin skin. I can't handle it. It's just sometimes it feels so mean that I'm, I'm not I'm built not a, for. I'm it. not a big roast guy. I don't, no, I, I know, I but it's it. downstream from like. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Come on. I'm yeah, kidding. Yeah. Don't well, be so a, thin There's skin. a famous on Tough Crowd. There's a fa- you can look it up. It's Greg Gerardo and Dennis Leary. Those guys are and, and Dennis Leary at the time. Greg Gerardo was a, you know a headliner, but he wasn't that well known. And Dennis Leary was already movie TV star, whatever. Yeah. And Dennis Leary says something, and Greg Gerardo makes a joke, and he goes, "Oh, I bet you're the kind of guy that does you know whatever. You, what did you do? Your homework? You wrote your jokes?" And then Greg Gerardo just go. You can look this up. Goes into him hard. And Dennis Leary was sitting there like he was like, De- Dennis, Dennis and Leary, it is Dennis very Leary. uncomfortable, but it's like, but that's what the show was. Where yeah. Like, <laughs> Dennis Leary oh, yeah. was talking about war. He was yeah, like no, but saying, Greg so, no, we just, just took him just, down. We just yeah. have to blow this fucking place up. There's no nothing we can do without actually fucking firing a yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. shot. That, and he went, what, like the Cold War? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was yeah, no yeah. shots ever fired. <laughs> and then he went through the history of wars and all that stuff. And there he was like, yeah, uh, yeah, But I remember, like, there was some Opie and Anthony shows where I'm like, well, I have to be fucking this turned on, like this switched on, and it's fucking 6 a.m. Yeah. And I'm like, because uh, I was just you sit next to Patrice O'Neill and Jim Norton. Oh, yeah. It's Those fucking, guys are machines. It's daunting. Yeah, yeah. but it is. But you and saying, okay, so I went to. Um, 
the ground when I first moved here, I went to the Groundlings and I did a, an audition. I guess you go and you they see where they're gonna what level you'd go into. Mm -hmm. But I had never done to any. See if they're gonna take your money for a class. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I bet they're gonna take. You. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what, you're gonna go level one or two. That's okay. It. But fair you still enough. have to do it. And and I did okay because I've been on stage. You know, I wasn't like nervous perform, but I didn't know what I was doing. We're doing the warm up. The yeah. Zip, zap, like, I don't know. I didn't know what I was doing. But then I was, to, to me, I didn't, I never ended up following through and doing the classes because I was afraid to do them because I thought it was hard. And you're saying, so it's funny when the way you perceive things, you're like, oh, stand up is hard. I'm like, I don't know. Improv seems very hard to me. Well, like, to be good at it, not like you can anyone. Right, anyone right, can do right. It, but like to be good at it, I don't want to just. Yeah, go there's there nothing worse than watching bad improv. It's, it's punishingly right. hard to watch that stuff. Or like really the stuff you're describing, like the, the rich kids improv like very presentational and lots of energy and it's not necessarily funny but they're winning over the crowd and they're just upbeat and there's a lot of energy like mm. i don't enjoy watching that either so i get it but like mm. just stand up is i think stand ups feel more in control because they're not relying on anyone like i got a story and like it's the same way if if, if somebody interrupts you and you're on a rhythm it's like dude please i yeah. really i want to control this whereas improvisers are a little lazier and you can like have half an idea I call it or whatever or like welcome I got nothing but somebody else is going to have something and so if you go up with people who are talented you come off looking great and you've prepared nothing and mm. all you have to do is heighten and pay attention and ground it in reality and there's a lot of training that goes into it but so when someone yells out mom shit halfway through a show I embrace that yeah. And from now on. <laughs> so, well, that's... <laughs> so, so saying you can all fuck off and storming off the stage is not the right answer? <laughs> I've mean, been reading the rooms wrong. <laughs> well, you also have to... Con you're like a lion tamer, too, because you don't want to encourage people for feeling like, oh, I can be part of the show. Like, no, actually... Like, we do that in improv shows. Too. All right, we got our suggestion. This is where you listen and pay attention to that. Like, you do... Cr you create yeah. that line, but you also... Stand up's um, just hard. Who is, I don't know if they're saying the name right. Viola Spolin or is Viola Spolin? So Viola Spolin was one of the, she did like short form games, almost like theater sports. And she was in the projects in Chicago, like the public housing. And that was like when all the immigrants were coming in, she found that a way, because all the parents were working in factories and she had all these kids she was trying to educate. So she was a social worker. So she used improv games where it's like, you just talk Italian gibberish and you talk English gibberish and they would do a scene together and somehow the kids were able to communicate with each other even though they didn't speak, neither one spoke English or they didn't have a common language. Or like you be the boss and yell at him and you be the wife and you be upset when he yells or something. You know. And so she had these simple improv games for kids to play and it was a way to socialize them in a new country as a way to give them play time during the day and, and it was like the rudimentary roots and then... Viola Spolin, I believe, son was Paul Sills, and he's one of the main guys who started Second City. Yeah. So downstream from Viola's games is what became Second City. What would be a game that you would By suggest? By the way, if you had a real historian, they would probably puncture a lot of this, but I'm sort of paraphrasing history here. You're, you know the most in this room. That's okay, all that that's fair. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, okay, yeah, that's how it works. Is yeah. Okay. Um, what would be a game that you would, would say is a good starting point? You know, what, what do you start a class off with? Or what would you say to kids? Or the two people in the car right now and they're in their tractor and all they've done is fucking <laughs> is, is drive around well, you know, Yeah, they're ready for in and out. <laughs> I don't know if this is a beginner game, but the, the concept of group mind, like you're tuning into this imaginary group mind, if you will. So let's say you two, I'm teaching you in a class and your goal is going to be to come to the same word. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll uh, give you a suggestion, and you sort of word associate, but on the count of three, you'll both say what it, sort of what it makes you think of, but mm. listen to your partner, okay? So okay. the word we're going to give them is skull, okay? Fucking. So, no, no. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so go one, and you're both going to answer. One, two, three. Shirt. Head. Okay, so you said head, uh, and he said good. shirt. Now, hold on. Yeah. So now think, what's the bigger picture for what are you guys getting close to, okay? You're going to say another word. You heard his, he heard yours. Go ahead. One, two, three. Hat. Hole. All right, try to say it at the same time. So you're yeah. like, and the goal being, so hat and hole. Yeah. So it's kind of changing. The concept's changing. Try to meet each other halfway with the mutual concept. Maybe one word ties it all together, or at least you know Jim and you know him. Mm. All right, one, two, three. Bold. 
What were you going to say? I was going to say box. Right. It's, it's hard. It's it's a hard. movie seven. That's an advanced game. It's a hard game. Or the other game. Yeah. So that's a hard game. But we I want like to get it. to the same. We're trying to get to the same word by taking the hints of the two words and try to Jack, connect them. Jack, you are dumb. Fired. Fired. Uh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or simply, <laughs> we'll do this one quick. Everybody, close your eyes. Okay. And we're going to count to twenty. Mm -hmm. Just randomly say one of the numbers going up. But we can't if we say when, it at the you, same when, time. When you get to it, you mean? Uh, if we say it at the same time, we got to start. No, there's no order. Yeah. Anyone can start. One. But we want two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, I sort of said it. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of stepped on each I other, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the sort of give and take exercise. Yeah. I like those, but I don't know if it teaches you anything. And, but well, I like but those. I guess it like, you, like you said, you, the more comfortable you're around other people, you get that. Yeah, it's uh, that's part of the right. That's, yeah, and you're also trying to serve a scene. Like you're stepping into a scene, like much like in stand up, hecklers aren't serving the comedy. So if if you two are being really funny in a restaurant scene and you don't need a waiter, and I come in to be a waiter only to get a laugh. I'm not really serving what's already working, you know what I mean? So you got to know when to hang back mm -hmm. or introduce something. If some, I wish the waiter was there, then you know to come in. So a yeah, lot of it's yeah, just yeah. like hanging back when stuff's working. Yeah. You know what I do on this podcast all the time, people still write to, is I purposely step on jokes in this podcast because I, <laughs> I know it upsets people. So then I do it and then people write me. You know you're stepping on Jim's job. Oh, so I'm so doing sorry. That. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Oh, you would have done well on Tough Crowd. Out. You would have been great on Tough Crowd. I, I get frustrated <laughs> watching sometimes improv because I, I watch improv the same way I watch Magic. So when I'm watching Magic, I'm like, all right. What's is, the trick? Yeah, is, is he using twins? Uh, where's the legs gone? Oh, no, they're behind that curtain over there, like this, right? And then when I'm watching improv, they're like this, like, yeah, as a kid, I was really into dinosaurs. And I'm like, someone come in as a fucking dinosaur. <laughs> Why are you, who, what? Uh, missed opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't just, I don't just watch it. I'm always um, picking at the bits. What is the oldest running improv Well, the theater? bad improv oh, would be five minutes after the dinosaur was referenced, you come in to be the dinosaur because <laughs> you couldn't let go of your idea. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. dude, we're way past that. Don't come in. Oh, is, there's nothing worse when you have a really funny story to tell, even on a podcast or something like that, and you're like, oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> Time's elapsing. <laughs> That's what happened with the book. Yeah. Why did you bring the book back up? It was so long ago, Jake. <sighs> Call back. This is the exact. <laughs> what? What is paperback? Yeah, there you go. Nice. Uh, two. Uh, what is thirteen? What is the oldest running improv theater? Is it Second City? That's what Jim said. I'll say Second City. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and Second City is a reference to the Chicago being the second city of America. Yeah. Is, is that the reference? I think it was a yeah. New York was the first city or theater city certainly. So I think it even might have been pulled from a review like oh the second city thinks they can compete with New York or whatever. Right, right, right. And so like a lot of people just go there to like I I, I saw a documentary on um, uh, Chris Farley who I, I adore. Yeah. And he just went there and stood out the front of the building until they let him in, and then, you know. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, this was like, I want to come in. Wow. And then, like, as soon as you meet him, you're like, we'll put you in something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a magnet because people had come out of there and gotten a break. And yeah, so yeah. if you had any kind of dream of being in comedy, at least sketch comedy, you mm. would go to Second City. Why is Lauren Michaels an authority on sketch comedy? I know we're going off the thing. Like, I, I appreciate everything he's done and the movies that he's produced, I, I'm not, and I'm not shitting on the guy but why is he the doyen of what's good and what's bad in sketch comedy does anyone know he there? has the keys to that show that's I been on for 50 years but how did he get the keys to begin with because nobody cared about a midnight slot yeah. it was they were just doing old oh, bonanza slot. episodes oh, yeah. like good. at midnight and he came up with the idea it was like we can do counter programming there's a young audience yeah and it'll cost us nothing plus his track record and it's yeah. like even when they're like, oh, no, no, I don't no, like this how cast did, or how this did cast. Get to, the I understand yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, how does, yeah. what was the first domino push? Yeah, I guess. I think he had I a guess. show in Canada yeah. or something. I think it was part of a bring... duo, a, a comedy duo in Canada. But also, what I'm Matt was mistaken. saying was that's how Byron Allen, you know, Byron Allen has all these TV shows, <laughs> mm. and he basically just tells them like, comics leashed. 
Yeah, no, but you can have it for free. <laughs> Make sure you do this joke. You know what he does though? He says you can have all he has courtroom shows. Yeah. You can have these for free. I want half the ads to sell. That's how he does it. He was a marketing major. So they're like, uh, sure, we want a free TV show that we get half the ads revenue, and he gets the other half. Oh, that is genius. I didn't know that. Yeah. You know, Mike Myers started out doing um, a, a double act stand up in <clears throat> London. Really? Yeah, and he's like, in, the, in the London comedy store. I don't know who his mate was, but the, the, there's loads of pictures. Someone, someone very disgruntled <laughs> right now. I'll look him up. Dana something. <laughs> um, anyway, so so he did a he did a he did a um, he, there's pictures. Of it. So so I believe his parents were from his mother or father was from Liverpool or something. That's why he's always with the Scottish accents and, like, and he does all the regional British accents. Yeah. yeah. And he, was, he he did what I did. He moved over to England when he was 20 to go travel a little bit, you know, and from Canada. And then he went and did that. And then I think he came and did Second City afterwards. But he actually cut his teeth in the in the London comedy scene. That um, I didn't know. Long form, short form. We talked about that. Theater sports. I guess we touched on that, right? Yeah, that's to me. That's the same as comedy sports. I could be wrong, yeah. but mm. like where the referee goes, okay, two points yeah, the for this team, and you're so that's kind of like where whose line is in anyway. Well, yeah. whose line is definitely short form, and again, a lot sometimes they have and they give jokes. out fictional points, kind of. Yeah, yeah, and they have jokes with them, like they have uh, on a TV show to secure or to ensure comedic value they're not just letting those gentlemen go out there oh they're uh, funny as shit uh, uh, don't get me wrong but they have jokes in their pockets that I've, have been given to them i've been on that midnight yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we know what we're about to see i'm yeah. sorry i don't want to put all the <laughs> yeah. i remember i remember hearing from a, a canadian um executive they they so the british panel show is a popular popular thing right that never quite sort of caught on in america i the, love the, those i was just in london i watched so much panel shows yeah, i love them game never, shows never mind whatever. the buzzcocks eight out of ten cats yeah uh, good news week all these different shows in britain and um you get on those and you sort of you don't know the questions because there's normally a quiz based thing you don't know the questions but you know if a certain thing's going to come up so you can sort of prep a joke and all that type of stuff and this 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 Canadian thing was um, TV guy was like, you know, we'd really like to have those shows, but we've just tried it. But the Canadian comics, they just, um, you know, they uh, they don't seem to be as quick as those British ones. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then uh, the person the person said to him goes goes, uh, well, you know, they get the questions beforehand. And just watching uh. this executive go. <laughs> <laughs> well that's cheating uh, but that's cheating uh, yeah um yes and we talked a little bit about that but that's right yeah that's yes cool. and is just receiving much like the kitchen rules you receive somebody's declarative statement like come on into my office so you know you're in an office you don't want to say wait a minute i thought we we're on the moon then you're just ruining any potential thing you've started to build. So you just agree with someone's what someone's giving you, and then and is to add to it. It's something that I've uh, since my wife has been doing improv that I've been adding into arguments. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yes. It's clever. So, so she goes, "You're an asshole," and I go, "Yes, and <laughs> a mother, oh, no. a mother bleep." <laughs> And why is Chicago so important? Is it because Viola Spolin? Is that like... I guess I, to, uh, several things. I think like the early... Sh University, Sh University of Chicago is where like the early modern Second City roots started. Viola Spolin before that. And then, yeah, and then Del Close kept it going. And then Second City was like this place where people like Chris Farley would show up. It just became this... They, they invested in developing sketch shows and improv like before any other major city also the weather <laughs> what do you mean because it's so cold because yeah because oh, yeah. it's very it, okay it's very hard okay australian stand-up comedy only really does well for the most part in theaters because people will come out and see people uh, uh, who are famous or something like yeah. that but the grassroots stuff because because it's nice outside we just don't really want, you know cold weather brings you indoors it's the same reason Ireland has so many pubs it's the whole thing that people want to go in and be entertained when it gets dark at bloody three o'clock and it's all bleak and all that type of stuff I'm a big bleak okay in the but why wouldn't that art form be stand-up comedy as opposed to sketch comedy in Chicago yes I agree with the theory mittens it's all mittens. <laughs> <laughs> explain okay cover this gloves yeah, not humorous. Functional. <laughs> right? Functional. 
functional. But if you mittens have, are funnier. If yeah. you have mittens where you've decided your hand is just a claw, you've got claws. <laughs> or a puppet. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you've decided that I'm going to have a bit of string that goes through one sleeve right through my back, out through another sleeve. So if I take my mittens off, they just dangle off my hands. Yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> but why can't you do stand-up? Why do you need another partner? Because ah, you too much pointing in stand-up. <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> when do you point? Stand up comedy. Stand up comedy is a fingered art form. <laughs> You're good at improv. There's a lot. You of can't that. do it in mittens. You can't do it in mittens. Mittens okay. is all improv. Uh, <laughs> uh, you might need to make an addendum to this book over here. <laughs> I will. The I love, I love the winter rules. Yeah. Yeah, it should just be called mittens and why. <laughs> <laughs> mittens are funnier. <laughs> no, no. Days yes, are funny. Mittens are funny. Uh, uh, but you say, okay, so in Britain, the stand-up comedy circuit dies in the summer. Is that right? Yeah. So, so that, that Wednesday and Thursday is completely gone. Yeah, Chicago. That's, 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 is that because they're all that's in Edinburgh? A, that's, that's a Reese Darby joke. Reese Darby used to do a joke years ago. Where he used to go. This. He goes, "Been here in uh, England for a long time." <laughs> goes, "Remember, remember last summer was good, wasn't it?" It's was Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Chicago, I tell you on this podcast, Chicago doesn't get enough credit as a city because it always comes up in like a lot of stuff, like a lot of the subjects that we do. Like Chicago, yeah. this is where this started. This is where this is. It then, is a world class city. It's yeah, a, it's I, a great I, city. It's a, it's it's a, a fantastic city. It's a banger, city. Chicago. Yeah. It is. Yeah, I, I, love, I love Chicago. It the the winter is very difficult, although sure. this year they've had very little snow. It was there. just yeah, there and it was cold. Um, but, uh, <laughs> it, was, it, was but, very, it was as advertised, windy and cold. But I'm I'm coming from a place of growing up in Florida and living here, so I'm the woods. Yeah, yeah. The, the improv scene in Florida, no good, terrible. Uh, well, there was we one. Some suggestions. Uh, Let me guess. Manatee <laughs> Beach. Uh, the Orlando scene because of <laughs> oh, Disneyland. They, they yeah. I think having all those people come in, they needed more ways to entertain these audiences. So I think there was. Mm. Like Wayne Brady came out of yeah. that world, guys like that. I'm from Miami. Miami scene was not because I, I don't know any. I know fashion came out. Give me, of Miami. give me, a, yeah. give me a famous yeah. Cuban improver. I don't know any. Like I would go to some improv stuff in Miami. I'm like, this is terrible. This and then, is your opportunity to, to and do then a the Cuban first, voice. And, and then the like first show I went to, and I went to an improv show at UCB. The, uh, Miami? Uh, no, here. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is really good. <laughs> I was like, I guess this is what it's supposed to be. Um, I, 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 cause, famous, cause I've oh, seen, I've seen some bad improv and I've seen some good sure. improv. And it, it, it bothers me when people say they don't like improv for the same reason. Well, you know, I hate when I meet people who go like this. Oh, yeah, I've seen stand-up. I didn't, I didn't care for it. Who'd you see? No, you, yeah. You've seen it. You've got to give it. You've you, you, you got to try it three times. It's like new food, right? I said it to my kids, right? Oh, I don't like that. you got to have it three times, and then we'll decide whether you like it or not. It mm -hmm. might grow on you. Um, what group is Matt Walsh a founding member of? You said UCB. Do you know who citizen, the other founding members citizen are? Brigade. Yeah. Um, Amy Poehler. Nice. And... Arthur Fonzarelli. <laughs> <laughs> I think that one's wrong. Um, I don't. I. So I. Well, you can know. I, I don't think I know. Matt, <laughs> know. Matt, Matt, Matt Besser, Matt Ian Besser. Roberts. Uh, yeah, 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 we Ian all came Roberts. out of Chicago yeah. together. And what was the impetus? Like, why did you? What, what year was that? And what? Like, what? I think in '96 we wanted to uh, get a sketch show on Comedy Central, so we drove out to New York in a van, or different vans, but that was the dream. And then. No, we're not there, and it, like we're all separate. We don't. We have nothing to do with UCB anymore. Oh, don't you? No. Oh, say, really? No. I, oh, I didn't say, know. That. I really like that space. It's, it's a got, great theater. It's, it's a great little theater, and it's got a it's got a wonderful alleyway with kegs. And yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That like it really makes you feel like you're in show business. Well, Scientology right across the street. Uh, well, don't you feel like that's convenient for me? Yeah. yeah. It's all right there. Yeah. I can yeah. go in, get a personality test, then go off and do a bit of improv. Then stand in a keg alleyway, like, and then eat at birds. Yeah, <laughs> but don't you feel like every stand-up green room is like that? Like, it's you're always butting up against yeah. like common, like the trash alleyway. Yeah, or yeah like, I love that. I, I like, love it too. I like when you go to it doesn't Vegas or like it, banquet halls and you see like seven hundred plates being decorated. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. when you go through like a big event space. Yeah. It doesn't matter how big the show gets. 
the alleyways remain the same. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. if you go, if you're on on Fallon tonight, right, and they'll be, well, we're having a car picking you up, Mister Jeffries, and I'll be in my suit, and I'll be, <laughs> and then you walk past the smelliest dumpster. <laughs> yeah. The car drives you in underneath the Rockefeller, blah da 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 da. As then, everybody goes by, the camp, yeah, the yeah, planchette, it, everybody. It, it, uh, it doesn't matter if you're Lady Gaga and you're in a big no. special outfit. <laughs> She's walking past that fucking dumpster. Yeah. <laughs> the trash elevator. Yeah. You're, sorry, we have to get on the trash elevator. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you, then, you, then she, she's definitely gotten a lift that goes yeah. Yeah. with like fucking Smells, corrugated yeah. irons floors yeah, there's and a, there's a weird puddle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't step in that. Except there was that one casino. There was there was one casino. I think that was in Northern California. Had a like, beautiful backstage no, area. Or? Every like you know the security wanna, came to get us and they brought us to the service elevator and I was like this room is really I want to say it was around near San Jose or something like that. Yeah, I think it was near near Napa Valley or something like that. Yeah, and and we went and played a casino. It was so nice that it was shocking that you were like what is going on And everything it was like someone with like obsessive compulsive had done the back and I was just The manager's very tidy. I was like this is the (laughs) cleanest (laughs) It was I could have lived in this alley. It was noticeable. I was like and all all the sheets were folded and everything like Uh. even the dirty laundry was clean and in boxes and yeah oh yeah it was wonderful it was wonderful and then you can go to some other places and you walk by and you're like fucking this whole the front of the casino is a sham <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, many of them uh, um i think we were to no i'm not gonna say um don't want to throw it uh, all right dinner party facts here we are uh ask our expert to give us a fact something obscure interesting about the subject that the audience can use to impress people uh i don't know I would say <laughs> no. I, I guess it's just like for me. I got on Veep because the casting ladies like just put the script down and start improvising. Like that would be my like personal journey with improv. Like when I auditioned for you know got to do a great show for seven years with amazing writing. I was studying that script. Like you guys, you Dan and DJ were probably a lot funnier by sort of paraphrasing it. I was studying it in that audition moment, and I did one take, and the woman's like. The woman, Allison Jones, is like, I think you're. You just put it down. Just say it. Just to say whatever you want, and that opened the door for me to get the next rehearsal. So, yeah. it's not really a shareable mm. dinner party moment, but it's filling space for your listeners. I, 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 I feel like every skill you get is a skill that you can rely on every now and again, and they can help you through your career. Yeah, because like I studied musical theater at university, and arguably. And then I, I worked in opera. People never know. I, I was in two operas, right? Just in the chorus. Just That's saying, impressive. And you're like, you're like, that was before I did stand up. And then I think, well, that was a big waste of my time, was it? Or because when I did stand up, I hit the ground running. Yeah. Because I already was on stage. I'd gotten rid of the stage for a bit. Yeah. And I already, and I already knew that the, the lights are going to be bright and the thing's going to, be, you know what I mean? I just knew to be comfortable. So I, I, I felt like I was six months ahead of everyone else just from that experience. You know what I mean? I'll tell a funny. Uh, you were um, in show business. Uh, in, interview story. That when Dan back at all read for legit, uh, I like it's so weird. I never acted in anything. I never had an acting part. And then you've got your own sitcom, and so you've never felt more imposter syndrome than when you're sitting there casting actors. Yeah, I never had an audition, and I was casting. I'd had some auditions, but I never had an audition that worked out. And I was casting other people and like judging their performance as they came. Yeah. In. Now, now the part of Dan was our uh, Steve that Dan played was directly written from a character, a person in my own life. Someone like so. Dan does not look like this guy. He's not the same age as this guy. He doesn't have anything, nothing the same as this guy. And I was so with blinders on. That's the guy I want. This is the guy I want. Like that, right? Dan walks in. He's wearing a corduroy jacket with like patches on the elbows, like he, like a professor, and he's 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 bald and he's got sort of different color hair and all this type of stuff. He looks nothing like the guy that I knew, and I, I was already like, "Nah, I'm not gonna fucking cast this guy." And I said, he comes in. The director goes, "Hello, Dan. Sorry for keeping you waiting there. We're running a little bit behind." And he goes. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, I'm going to get a ticket, so thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> and then he was like, "I'm going to get a ticket." And he was, he was not impressed. He was fucking. Oh yeah. He was like yeah. this. He was like this. All right, let's fucking do this. Come on, like this. And instantly, I was like, 
I love this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I love this guy, right? And so as soon as he left, I was like, this guy's insane. <laughs> I said, he's fucking, he's, he, this is the, I want that character on TV. Angry, yeah. I want this angry, he was like, he was like a man who, like uh, Noel Gallagher once said of his brother that he was a, a man living in a world of soup holding a fork. Right? <laughs> And that's what Dan Backett is. He's a man living in a world of soup holding a fork, right? Yeah. And, and so so he got a call back and then obviously he came back and he was like, oh, fuck, jeez, oh, I might get this. <laughs> and so he was super – he came back like this. Hey, Different. guys. Hey, hey. Uh, oh, you know, this, you know how it is. A uh, long day. Uh, like, and, like and, and, I, and I'm like, I'm like no, nah, no, nah, bring, bring the cunny guy back. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's how he got it. We actually, you know, I, everything that he ever did on screen, I wrote around Dan. Yeah. So the character of Steve was never meant to be an alcoholic. And then fucking Stan plays such a good drunk. There was yeah. one scene at the beginning of season one where, where Dan's character had nothing to do. He had nothing to do. And so, and so he comes up to me, he goes, I've only got a few lines in this scene. He goes, we're at a party. And he goes... And he goes, well, what should I do here? And I, and I said, oh, I don't know. And he goes, how about I get obnoxiously drunk, right? <laughs> and just be in the background, just like hitting on women and stuff like that, just be like sleazy, horrible, drunk. And I was yeah. like, yeah, great, do that, right? And that was as much <laughs> of the conversation. And then from that moment on, season two was... Uh, Steve's character is a horrible alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard. That's an active choice. <laughs> he, he was never going to be an alcoholic, and the whole season was like the demise of Steve. He was losing his kids. The welfare was oh coming in. All this type of stuff, all because of that one little conversation. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, cool. Thank. Uh, thanks for being here, Matt Walsh. Oh, by the way, the even. I love, the, I, love, I love the dinner party fact, but also the Gamma uh, Viola Spolin. Yeah, I was reading his book. Yeah. Letter. That was like such a cool Those fact, too, like the way yeah. that that came about, like just from the kids. Well, it was. It was a social worker yeah. who developed these games, these improv games for kids to sort of yeah, land safely in a new country and engage with other kids who didn't share the same language. Yeah, cool. so it was like, you're going to be Beautiful. a boss. You're going to be a lawyer. Uh, you're going to be an abused child whose father's left him. See if you can find that somewhere. Uh, <laughs> or just imitate the space, like those rudimentary games when you're yeah. in an acting class. Like, okay, do this, and everybody imitates each other. Oh, and yeah. you, try to, you try to nail the character of the space. Like, real simple stuff. I don't know if it's too heady, but do you want to try to explain what the game is for long-form improv? Okay. I would it's say the you, game... where you neg women. Right. <laughs> I've tried it. It doesn't work. <laughs> That's Yeah, Neil Strauss wrote that one. Uh, no, the game is simply the repeatable comic dynamic that you sort of discover that you can go back to. Um, like a blind interior decorator. Imagine that, okay? Sort of funny, yeah, but if you yeah, if you came funny. if you came about it honestly through improv, where you're just sort of improvising, and lo and behold, I discover he's my decorator, and then later on I, he's legally blind. Keeping that going would be really funny. So the repeatable sort of comic dynamic would be funny. So that's the game, I think. Well, thanks for that, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Learn more in the so. book. No, I thought you were. Yeah. The, no, it's leaving us on a high there, Jack. No, I got. I, I want to. I want to repeat again though. Uh, listen to Matt, and it's with um, Timothy Simon, right? That's uh, Tim Simon. Tim yeah, Simon from yeah, Veep. Tim, Tim Simon uh, from Veep as well. Second in command of Veep rewatch, where I'm, you just guys just go through all the episodes and you have guests on. From, yeah, we do a lot of off-topic shows though. Yeah. We just don't cover an episode and we'll, we'll just have people on and so talk about nonsense find that wherever you listen to the podcast on our same network and then go and we see. started we started forcing people to watch it'd be like if you said watch episode 202 mm. we would say watch 202 so we did a rewatch of a rewatch because we <laughs> didn't want to cover anything uh, to yeah. do with beep but anyways <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh promise. go see matt live in atlanta at dad's garage on february 29th dad's garage.com for tickets and boca raton the studio at meisner park march 1st and 2nd the studio at meisner park.com all yeah. right matt thanks for being on the show thank this you is a fun one this is a straight up comedy one yep. thank you hey ladies and gentlemen if you're ever at a party and someone comes up to you and says uh improv isn't hard go yes and i don't know about that <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Australia. <laughs>